Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In the last two videos, I've been dealing with the basic cast code amplifier. If you missed one or both of these, well, the first one dealt with the theory behind them, and there is a link up in the corner and down in the description for the first video for you. In the second one, I work through the whole process of designing a basic cascode amplifier from start to finish. If you missed that one, you'll find a link, well, up in the corner and down in the description for your convenience. Now, in that second video, we ended up with a voltage gain of about 41 dB with the source output impedance of 1K ohm and assuming that the gain of the common emitter stage was approximately 1 we use the equation for the gain of the common base circuit. But what if I don't want a gain of 41 dB? What if I want a gain of, well, 20 dB? How do I do that? How do I set the gain? And what difference does this make in the overall frequency response of the amplifier? So in this video, I will be presenting three different methodologies to limit the gain of this amplifier. In the last two cases, I will compare their bandwidth to their 41 dB cousin. I also want to briefly show the effects of the output impedance of the circuit driving this cascode amplifier on the gain and frequency response of it. Look for a link to the go along with the video formula sheet in the description. If you have questions or comments, Please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and, well, don't forget to subscribe. Now, before we get into the how-to, I need to provide you with just a few simple definitions. You are going to be seeing a few equations in this video. These equations will contain certain items which have appeared many times in previous videos but I will define them here at the head end of this video to avoid confusion. The first is the thermal voltage represented by the symbol VT. This varies with temperature as its name implies. At 25 degrees Celsius, it is 0.026 volts. The second is what's called the early voltage represented by the symbol VA. Now, if you want to know what this is all about, you can check out my video on the subject. The link is in the description for you. The actual value of the early voltage varies widely. But with that said, the value that is often used for this in our equations is 100 volts. You will also see the symbol R pi. This is the input resistance of the transistor itself and is a function of the quiescent base current and the thermal voltage. It can be calculated using this formula. R pi is equal to the thermal voltage Vt divided by the quiescent base current I sub BQ. Then there is H sub Fe and beta, which are used almost interchangeably in most circles. It refers to the DC current gain of the transistor. If beta equals 100, and the base current is 10 microamps, then the collector current will be 100 times the 10 microamps, or 1 milliamp. Lastly, we have A sub V, and it is referred to as the voltage gain of a circuit, which is equal to V out divided by V in. Now, let's see how we can create a cascode amplifier with a designed in fixed voltage gain. Well, the first way to accomplish this is to simply choose a collector resistor value which will give you the voltage gain of 20 dB. Now, we would use the same common base voltage gain formula that we used before. We would be left with two unknowns. We could assume the one and calculate the other. So, if I wanted to maintain a quiescent base current of 15 microamps, and have a voltage gain of 10, or in other words, 20 dB, assuming the current gain of 100, 
Then we would rearrange the equation to look like this. And then putting in the known values, our collector resistor would have to be 173 ohms. But this will affect the quiescent collector voltage, among many other things. And this leads to a whole bunch of design calculations. Or you could choose a collector resistor value to provide a specific output impedance and then calculate the required quiescent base current to achieve this. The formula for the output impedance of a common base amplifier is dependent upon the quiescent collector current and the value of the collector resistor, as you can see here in this formula. But the voltage gain and the output impedance are interrelated by both the quiescent collector current and the value of the collector resistor. So after crunching these two formulas together, I get that the quiescent collector current can be calculated by this lovely formula. Now, suppose we want an output impedance of 500 ohms and a voltage gain of 10. Putting these known values into this equation, the quiescent collector current needs to be 0.519 milliamps. Now, we can go back to our equation for the collector resistor, or RC. Chunking the known values into it, we end up with the collector resistor value of 501 ohms. Now, with this determined, there lay a whole bunch of additional calculations to establish all of the other component values for the design. Now, what about this second method? Well, the second method begins by completing the design just like we did in the last video. Now, we add some negative feedback. Now, because the cascode amplifier is an inverting amplifier, this feedback comes directly from the output of the amplifier, as you can see here in this schematic. Now, how do we know how much resistance to use? To determine this, we are going to need to know a few things. First, we need to know the total source impedance, which is the sum of the source's output impedance and any series resistance that might exist between the source and the amplifier. Let's call this RS. We also need to know the gain of the amplifier with the source output impedance, that RS that we just talked about, equal to zero. We'll call this AV max. And finally, we also need to know the value of RB2 in parallel with RB3. We'll call this RN. Now, with all this knowledge, we apply this lovely formula to determine the feedback resistor value, where Rn is equal to Rb2 times Rb3 divided by the quantity Rb2 plus Rb3. I used a source resistance of 500 ohms and a series resistance between the source and the amplifier of 500 ohms, making a total of 1k ohm of source resistance, or RS. My feedback resistor came out to be 11.5k ohms. So here's the simulated result. Notice that the gain is almost exactly 20 dB. But also notice that the high end minus 3 dB point is at 51.25 megahertz. This is 10 times its 40 dB cousin with the same 1k ohm source impedance. Now that is pretty impressive. Now, on to the third method. As with method two, the third method begins by completing the design as we did in the last video. As you can see here, this is the same circuit that we developed. Now, I'm going to make a small change. I'm going to split the emitter resistor into two pieces. Now, the sum of these two pieces will equal the same value as the original emitter resistor. I will put the bypass capacitor across the lower of the two. The quiescent operating point of the circuit remains unchanged from a DC perspective. The gain, on the other hand, is dependent upon the value of the upper unbypassed emitter resistor. 
In essence, we are reducing the gain of the common emitter amplifier below 1. The gain of the common base circuit, well, it remains pretty much unchanged. So, how do we calculate the overall gain of this circuit? This equation gives us the approximate gain. Well, what if we have a target gain in mind? How do we calculate the required value of the upper emitter resistor? Well, we rearrange that equation that we just had to get this equation for RE1, the upper of the two emitter resistors. Now, putting all of our known values into this equation, we arrive at a value for RE1 of 185.67 ohms. Now, we know that RE2 is equal to the total emitter resistor value minus the upper emitter resistor value. Now this means that RE2 is going to be equal to 784.2 ohms minus 185.67 ohms, which gives us a value for RE2 of 598.53 ohms. Now, let's see how our circuit performs with this modification. As you can see here, its overall gain sits at 18.48 dB. But, we say, we designed this around a voltage gain of 20 dB. What happened to the other 1.52 dB? Is it because of something we didn't take into consideration in our design? Well, yes and no. Remember that this amplifier has a finite input impedance, and we have a 1k ohm source resistance that exists between the signal source and the input to the amplifier. When we consider all of this, we're losing about 1.7 dB in this voltage divider represented by the output impedance of our source and the input impedance of the amplifier. So, if we back out this effect, what do we get? We get that the amplifier itself has a gain of 20.2 dB, which is within 0.9% of our goal. Not too shabby. Well, what about the frequency response? Well, take a look at this. The high end minus 3 dB point is at 21.71 MHz. Its high gain cousin's high end minus 3 dB point was at 5.16 MHz. So, the gain limited version provides a four times improvement in the high end bandwidth. But, you know, I did promise I would talk about the effects of the output impedance of the source. So, that's next. For this demonstration, I used the simulated model of the 20 dB split emitter resistor implementation. I then varied the output impedance of the source from nearly 0 ohms up to 1k ohm without changing the amplitude of the source. Here you can see the results with this chart. Now, notice the twofold effect of the value of the output impedance of the source. First, we see that the gain decreases as the source's output impedance increases. At an output impedance of nearly 0 ohms, the passband gain is 20.01 dB, well, which is exactly what we designed around. As the source's output impedance increases, the passband gain also decreases. The major component of this decrease is the purely resistive aspect of the input impedance of the amplifier. Second, notice the effects on the frequency response. Now, at first glance, it seems that it affects both the high and the low end response. However, as you can see in this chart, when we correct for the purely resistive effects of the input resistance of the amplifier, the only real effect is seen on the upper end of the frequency response. You can see the passband gain is now the same as is the lower end frequency response. As the output impedance of the source increases, the bandwidth at the upper end decreases. 
our high end minus 3 dB point moves from 34.25 megahertz down to 21.71 megahertz as the source resistance moves from nearly zero to 1000 ohms. The input capacitance of the amplifier is what is at play here. This creates a frequency dependent voltage divider operating on the input of the amplifier. This is why the high end frequency response of the amplifier is degraded by the source's output resistance. Well, the obvious conclusion as we looked at each of these three methods is that the limited gain version has a wider bandwidth than that of the unlimited version. The particular method you choose to use would depend on your specific application. So, now you know how to create a cascode amplifier with a fixed gain by three different methods. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.